Uh, today we continue our study of that relinking thought process. Now the the section thirty eight, page two hundred and twenty three, objects of sense fear, sense fear, rebirth consciousness. So we already have gone through the dead relinking thought process. So you can see in this thought process there are only five javana moments. So the manual says here in the dead proximate cognitive process. So this process is called a dead proximate cognitive process or dead proximate a thought process. Although it is called death proximate, uh, near death, uh, death is also included included in this thought process, and also the re- rebirth in the future life and the bhavangas following. And one one thought process that follows the bhavangas is also included in this thought process. This is how. Uh, our teachers taught in in our country. In thought processes like this, only five feebly occurring jhanas should be expected. So here, a person is just close to death. So his uh, physical body or the material properties in the body are now very weak. So since the heart is weak, the javanas are not strong enough to run for seven moments uh, as usual. And so in, in, in this thought process and in thought processes like this, that is, dead relinking thought processes, the javanas occur only five times. Therefore, when death takes place while present objects are occurring and have entered the avenue of sense. What this means is, while present objects which have entered the avenue of sense are still existing. In this thought process, the present visible object KN, now it is still existing when the relinking consciousness arises. So, while the present objects which have entered the avenue of sense, that means which have come into the view of the eye, the ear, and so on, are still existing, then the rebirth linking and life continuum of the new existence also take a present object. So, in this thought process, the present visible object is still going on when Patisandhi arises. So in this thought process, not only Patisandhi, but Bhavanga number one and Bhavanga number two also takes the present visible object. In the case of a sense fear rebirth linking in the Kama Vajra Patisandhi, when the object is a sign of karma or a sign of destination perceived at any of the six doors, that object may be present or it may be past. So it can be the present or it can be past. That means the object of Patisandi can be present or past. So in this thought process, the object of Patisandi is present. But if they are follow after Javanas to the Dharamana moments and then also Bhavanga moments, then the present visible object uh, will disappear with the Bhavanga preceding the death consciousness. Or the present visible object uh, will disappear with the uh, disappearance of death consciousness. 
So let us say there is duty. If the present visible object disappears with duty, then at present it has become past. So the objects of a Kama Vajra Patisandi can be present or it can be past. And it is a sign of Kama or a sign of destination. Kama is always past. Kama is uh, what one acquired uh, through life and so Kama is always past. But sign of Kama and sign of destination can be past or present or future. So here, let's say it is present and in this uh, thought process, it lasts until the end of the second Bhavanga. So in this particular thought process, the relinking consciousness and Bhavanga 1 and Bhavanga 2 following it take the present object and Bhavanga 3 uh, takes the the visible object or KN and that has become past now. But karma as object is only past and it is perceived only at the mind door. Karma cannot be seen with eyes. Karma is, as you know, the, the volition which is a mental state and so it can be perceived only through the mind door. All these objects of sense, fear, rebirth are limited phenomena only. Limited phenomena means karma vajra objects only. Now when, when describing the objects in the third chapter, the author g gave us six kinds of objects. And also the objects are classified as karma vajra object, ruba vajra object, Aruba Vajra object. So Kama Vajra object means 54 Kama Vajra Chaitas, 52 Chaitasikas and 28 Rubas. So they are called Kama Vajra object. So the, the object of the Kama Vajra rebirth is, is limited phenomena only and that belong to Kama Vajra only. So it may be Kama Vajra Chaita or Chaitisika going along with it or one of the 28 Rupas or material properties. So this thought process is just one of many thought processes uh, that can arise uh, at the end of the life of a being. And this is for a Kama Vajra being. Now, in the case of rebirth linking in the fine material sphere, in the case of rebirth in the Ruba Vajra sphere, the object is a concept and is always a sign of Kama. When a person gets jhana, the object of that jhana is a concept. It is not ultimate reality. The mental image of, let us say, the, the earth disk, not the earth disk itself, but the mental image of it. So that mental image is in the mind of the person and so it, it is not an ultimate reality. It is called a concept or in Pali, Panyati. So since the jhana consciousness takes the concepts as object, the result of the jhana takes that concept as object. Now that is first jhana here. So first jhana takes how many objects as object? <laughs> How many? You have to go back to the third chapter. <laughs> okay. So let us say uh, it takes the mental image of Earth Kasina as object. So, and then this uh, Rupa Vajra Kusala 
produces the Rupa Vajra Vipaka. So the Rupa Vajra Vipaka first jhana is the result of Rupa Vajra Kusala first jhana. Since uh, the Kusala takes the concept as object, the resultant consciousness also takes the concept as object. So there are m- many kinds of objects. There are ten casinas and ten uh, foulness of the body and so on. And it's always a sign of karma. So that is a sign of karma. Not the karma itself and not the uh, sign of destination. So it is called sign of karma. The same with the second, third, fourth and fifth Rupa Vajra Jhana result in consciousness. So too in the case of rebirth linking in the immaterial sphere. So with the four of the Arupa Vajra Vipaka Chaitas, the object which may be a sublime state or a concept whichever is appropriate is always a sign of karma. Also they take the sign of karma as object. Now here it is said, which may be a sublime state, which may be a Mahagata object or a concept. The object of the first Arupa Vajrajana Kusala is what? Concept of space. And the object of second jhana is the first jhana, consciousness. So when we say uh, concept of space, then object is concept. But when the object is, the object of the second Arupa Vajra jhana is the first Arupa Vajra jhana, then it is called Mahagata object or sublime object. So number one, uh, takes the concept as object, the concept of space. Number two takes the number one cheetah as object and so uh, it takes the Mahagata object as object. Then number three, what is the object of number three? Nothingness. No, nothingness of the first Arupa Vajra consciousness. So nothingness is also a concept. So the number three takes concept as object and then number four. Number four takes the number three chitta as object. So number two and number four take Mahagata object as object and number one and number t- number three take concept as object. So the object of number one is concept of space and object of number three is nothingness of the first Arupa Vajrajana consciousness. So as the case may be, or whichever is appropriate, the object of the Arupa Vajra Patisandhi is a sublime state or a concept. Whether it is a sublime state or a concept, it is always a sign of karma. When a person tries to, tries to get the Arupa Vajra Jhana, he must already have obtained the five Rupa Vajra Jhanas. And after that, when he wants to attain the Arupa Vajra Jhana, he practices uh, meditation and taking the object of the fifth Jhana as object. Suppose the object of fifth Jhana is the earth disk, or the mental image of earth disk then he takes that mental image of this as object and then concentrate on that object saying earth, 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 so on. And then after he gets into the practice, he stops paying attention to that object. So when he stops paying attention to that object, that object disappears from his mind. When it disappears, it leaves a vacuum, it leaves a space in his mind. Now he takes that space as the object of his attention. 
because this person is the one who hates Rupa, who doesn't like Rupa. So if he doesn't like Rupa, he also doesn't like, which is the image of Rupa. So he tries to get rid of that image by not paying attention to it. So he stops paying attention to the mental image of the earth disk and so it disappears, uh, leaving a space. So now he concentrates on that space in his mind and practice meditation saying infinite space, infinite space and so on. And so when his meditation becomes mature, then he gets the first Arupa Vajrajana. So the first Arupa Vajrajana takes that space as object. So that space is not an ultimate reality, it is just in his mind and so it is a concept. When that person gets the second Arupa Vajrajana, first Arupa Vajrajana is no more, it has disappeared. So when he wants to get the third jhana, he concentrates on the nothingness or absence of the first Arubha Vajra jhana. Now he has obtained the second Arubha Vajra jhana, but he, he has lost the first Arubha Vajra jhana. The first Arubha Vajra jhana is not in existence at that time. So he takes the non-existence of Arubha, first Arubha Vajra jhana as object of his meditation. And when he gets the, the third jhana, uh, the, that, the object of that, that third jhana is the nothingness of the first Arubha Vajra jhana. So the first Arubha Vajra jhana and the third Arubha Vajra jhana take concept as object. But the second and the fourth Arubha Vajra jhana take the ultimate reality as objects. Because when a person, after getting the first Arubha Vajra Jhana, wants to get the second Arubha Vajra Jhana, then he takes the first Arubha Vajra Jhana as object of his meditation. Now he will say that the first Arubha Vajra Jhana is infinite or infinite, infinite consciousness, infinite consciousness and so on. So when he gets the second Arubha Vajra Jhana, that Arubha Vajra Jhana takes the first Arubha Vajra Jhana as, conscious, uh, as object. So the object of the second Arubha Vajra Jhana is a Mahagata object. That means a Paramata object, a, or an ultimate reality. And after getting the third Arubha Vajra Jhana, if he wants to go further, then he takes the third Arubha Vajra Jhana consciousness as object. So he, he practices meditation on that uh, third Arubha Vajra Jhana Jeda, and when he gets the fourth Arubha Vajra Jhana Jeda, that fourth Arubha Vajra Jhana Jeda takes the third Arubha Vajra Jhana Jeda as object. So the second and the fourth take the Mahagata object because the jhanas belong to the category of Mahagata or sublime objects. So here the manual says which may be a sublime state or a concept whichever is appropriate so as, as the case may be. A sign of karma. So this is the objects of Rupa Vajra rebirth and Arupa Vajra rebirth. So when a person is reborn in Rupa Vajra realm, he will be reborn with one of the five Rupa Vajra result and consciousness. Now you all know that if he is to be reborn or is, if he is reborn in the first Rupa Vajra Jhana play, then the first Rupa Vajra Jhana result and consciousness will function as uh, Bhattisandhi, Bhavanga and Jyoti. The same with the other uh, types of consciousness. So if he is to be reborn in the fifth 
รูปบาวจราจานาเพลง then his rebirth consciousness will be the fifth รูปบาวจราจานา resultant consciousness but during life he can experience other types of consciousness even the kama vajra consciousness a brahma can experience so when a person is reborn as a aruba vajra brahma bodiless brahma or immaterial brahma then if he is reborn in the first of the aruba vajra realm then his uh, rebirth consciousness will be the first aruba vajra jana resultant consciousness the same with the second third and fourth so these types of consciousness will function as patisandhi bhavanga and duty for him in that life but during lifetime he may experience some other types of uh, kama vajra consciousness also now the manual teaches us what rebirth follow what death so it is on page 226 section 40 determination of rebirth when one passes away from an immaterial realm one may be reborn in superior immaterial realms but not in lower immaterial realms and also in the sensuous plane with a three rooted rebirth consciousness now what what patisandhis can follow the aruba vajra death it says when one passes away from an immaterial realm so he begins with the immaterial brahmas so when an immaterial brahma dies his death consciousness will be one of these depending on uh, which realm uh, he is in so these will function as death consciousness for him so after death there must come patisandhi so what patisandhi can follow the death of the aruba vajra brahma so here it says one may be reborn in superior immaterial realms but not in lower immaterial realms so when a person gets to the let us say second aruba vajra realm he is unable to get into the first aruba vajra jhana so when he dies he may be uh, reborn in the same realm or in the upper realms but not in the lower realms so a person who dies from the first aruba vajra realm may be reborn in first aruba vajra realm and also second third and fourth aruba vajra realm but a brahma who dies from the second aruba vajra realm will not be reborn in first arba vajra ram so he will be reborn in the second again or in the third and in the fourth so that is what is meant by uh, saying but not in lower immaterial realms so he will be reborn in upper realms but not not the lower realms or he will be reborn in that realm again and also he can be reborn in the sensuous plane kama vajra plane with a three rooted rebirth consciousness three rooted rebirth consciousness so what are the three rooted rebirth consciousness in kama vajra plane now these these are the uh, kama vajra bhati sandhi how many how many are kama vajra bhati sandhi these eight right uh, kama vajra vibhaga eight and also two investigation right so in the sensuous plane with the three rooted rebirth so he will not be reborn with these two and he will not be reborn with 
two roots. So he will be reborn with three rooted rebirth consciousness. So after these four, what rebirth can follow? These two. Three rooted. And these two. Three rooted. When one passes away from the fine material sphere, that is after the Rupa Vajra Chuti, the, these five uh, Rupa Vajra Vipaka Chaitas function as Rupa Vajra Chuti. So after these, what can follow? One is not reborn without roots. So one is not re- reborn without roots means one is born with two root and three root three root rebirth so after death from the rupa vajra realms a person is reborn with two root and three root but not the rootless after the five rupa vajra vibhagas functioning as death what Bhattisandhis can follow? Three root and also two root. So these eight can follow. That means these eight can function as Bhattisandhi in the new life. After passing away from a three rooted existence, human beings, Devas and Brahmas. So after passing away from three rooted existence in the sensuous plane, so for Kamavajra only, human beings and six Devas, one may be reborn anywhere. Because human beings are capable of the best and the worst. <laughs> so a human being can become a Buddha, the best of the, the beings, and also he can do something so that he is reborn in the, the lowest great hell, Awichi. So, after a three-rooted existence in the sensuous plane, a person may be reborn anywhere. So, anywhere means all Bodhisattvas. The rest, that is, those who pass away with two roots and no roots. So after two root death and no root death, are reborn only in the sense sphere realm. So they are, they cannot be reborn in the Rupa Vajra and Arupa Vajra. Because only three root persons uh, are reborn in the Rupa Vajra and Arupa Vajra. So after the two root and rootless death, of Kama Vajra, what will follow? Sense fear realms. Three root and two root sense fear realms. So after two root and rootless death of Kama Vajra, the rebirth is three root, two root, and no root. So this is a general statement. Just this is already a little difficult to understand. But that is because you may not be familiar with the preceding sections. But if you are familiar with preceding sections, I think this statement is easy to understand. But our teachers taught us not just this general statement, but the detailed ones which Bhattis and these can follow which death in a detailed manner. So they are given in the in the book as well as in the handout. And there are some corrections to be made and I don't know whether they, they are already uh, made in your book. So this we find at the end of this chapter so page 230 no 
Now, number 31, neither perception nor non-perception. That is old life. And then, next column is death consciousness. So when death occurs to that person, the fourth Arubhavachara result and consciousness functions as death. He can be reborn in the new realm 5 to 13 and 31. Now th these numbers are the numbers of the 31 planes of existence that we studied at the beginning of the fifth chapter. So 5 to 11 means human beings and six Deva realms. And 31 means the highest plane. Because he, he is the highest plane, he will not be reborn in lower Arubhavachara planes and also he will not be reborn in Rubhavachara plane. So he will be reborn in, only in the fourth or highest Arubhavachara plane and his rebirth consciousness in those planes can be fourth Arubhavachara resultant and three root Kama Vajra resultant. There are four of them. So whether you look at uh, the chart in the book or in the handout, they are the same. Uh, but in the handout, I use Pali and in the book, the English is used. But they are the same. So you may look at both. So in the handout, we say fourth Aruba Vajra Vipaka Food, three root kama vajra vibhaka and so on. They are the same. Now from the thirtieth plane, the plane of nothingness, a Brahma dies from that plane. So when he dies, the third arupa vajra vipaka consciousness functions as dead consciousness for him. And then he can be reborn in again five to eleven, thirty and thirty one not in the lower Arubhavajra plane and Rubhavajra plane. And his rebirth consciousness will be third and fourth Arubhavajra Vibhaka consciousness and also three rooted Kamavajra Vibhaka consciousness. And there are four of them. And then number 29, infinite consciousness. This is the second Arubhavajra realm. So, a Brahma dies from that realm with second Arubha Vajra Vipaka consciousness. And he can be reborn in 5 to 11, 29 to 31. And his uh, rebirth consciousness can be second to fourth Arubha Vajra Vipaka and three rooted Kama Vajra Vipaka. Since it is three rooted, there are only four of them. Then number 28. This is the first Arubha Vajra realm. A Brahma who dies from that realm dies with first Arubha Vajra uh, Vipaka consciousness as dead consciousness. And he can be reborn in the Kama Vajra 5 to 11 and then 28 to 31. Since his Ram is the lowest Aruba Vajra, he can be reborn in that Aruba Vajra number 28 and also he can be reborn in 29, 30 and 31. And his uh, rebirth consciousness will be first to fold Aruba Vajra Vibhaka consciousness and also when he is reborn in 5, 11 and so on, three rooted Kama Vajra Vibhaka consciousness. Now, number 22, non-recipient, mindless being. Since he is mindless being, when he dies from that realm, there is no death consciousness. He can be reborn in 5 to 11. Because a non-percipient being is like a statue and so he does not get any jhanas, he cannot experience any jhanas in that realm. So he is 
in that realm for 500 world cycles like a statue with no mental activity. So when he dies, the, because of the power of the jhana he practiced before, he is not reborn in four woeful states. So he is reborn in five to eleven as human being or as devas. And so his the Patisandi consciousness will be great uh, Kama Vajra resultant, all eight. No, Kama Vajra, two root and three root uh, Kama Vajra resultant. So all eight Kama Vajra resultant. Now number 21. I hope you have made the correction there. So great reward. This is the fifth jhana ram. So when a Brahma dies from that ram, he dies with fifth rupa vajra vipaga consciousness. Or fifth rupa vajra vipaga consciousness functions as death consciousness. And death consciousness is, or that uh, uh, Brahma is reborn in 5 to 22. And then 28 to 31. Because in here we are dealing with wardlings or puttujanas. So a puttujana cannot be reborn in the five pure abodes. So we have to exclude these five pure abodes from other realms. So not from 5 to 31, but from 5 to 22 and from 28 to 31. And his rebirth consciousness will be the Kama Vajra Vipaka, eight Kama Vajra Vipaka, and five Rupa Vajra Vipaka, and four Aruba Vajra Vipaka. Because 28 to 31 means both Rupa Vajra and Aruba Vajra realms. And then number 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, up to 12 are the same. But uh, since it is on the new page, we have to make corrections for number 14. So there also it should not be 5 to 31, but... 5 to 22 and 28 to 31. The rebirth consciousness are the same. And now we come down to number 11, Kama Vajra, the highest of the six Diva realms. So when a Diva from that realm, Paranamita Vasavati, dies, he dies with two rooted Kama Vajra Vipaka or three rooted Kama Vajra Vipaka because the Devas can be two rooted persons as well as three rooted persons. So when his death consciousness is two rooted Kama Vajra Vipaka, he will be reborn in number one to eleven. So he can go down to hell from the Deva realm. And his rebirth consciousness will be eight Kama Vajra Vibhaka consciousness and also two investigation consciousnesses. If his death consciousness is three root Kama Vajra Vibhaka, then he can be reborn in one, two, twenty-two and twenty-eight to thirty-one. And the rebirth consciousness all possibilities except pure abodes. All possibilities except Suddhavasas. Because he is still a warling here and so he cannot be reborn in the five pure abodes. Then number 10, same as number 11. 9, 8, 7, same as number 11. Now number 6. 
When a person dies from number six, Chatu Maharajika, his dead consciousness can be wholesome result in investigation, Santirana. Or two root Kama Vajra Vibhaga. Or three root Kama Vajra Vibhaga. So when his dead consciousness is wholesome result in investigation, Santirana, then he can be reborn in 1 to 11. And his rebirth consciousness in those realms will be 8 Kama Vajra Vibhaga uh, Jadas and two uh, investigation consciousnesses. If his dead consciousness is two rooted Kama Vajra Vibhaga, four of them, then the same, he, he can be reborn in one to eleven and his rebirth consciousness will be eight Kama Vajra Vibhagas and two Santiranas. But if his dead consciousness is three root Kama Vajra Vipaka. Then he can be reborn in 1 to 22 and 28 to 31. So uh, the rebirth consciousness, all possibilities except pure abodes. Then human beings. Human beings are the same as Chatu Maharajika. So human beings can be born in, uh, the, the worldling human beings can be born in 1 to 22, 28 to 31, and the rebirth consciousness or all possibilities except pure abodes. Now we come to the four woeful states, Asura, Asura Kaya. Since they take rebirth with unwholesome result in investigation, their death consciousness is the same. So unwholesome result in investigation. And they can be reborn in 1 to 11. So a person who is reborn as an Asura can be reborn as a human being, as Devas, or can go to hell. And his rebirth consciousness will be 8 Kama Vajra Vipakas and 2 Investigation Consciousness. The same with the Beta, the Hungry Ghost, the Animal, and Hell beings. So this is the different rebirths following different deaths. So from this chart we understand that a person who dies from a certain realm can be reborn in this and this uh, realms. And also we know which type of consciousness function as uh, death consciousness and rebirth consciousness. So this is for worldlings or putrojanas. The next table is a table for trainees. Now in the handout I want you to make a correction. The heading duties followed by Patisandis for now you see for Ariyas. So you strike out Ariya and and put another word S E K K H A S Sikhas S E K K H A S now Sikhas are translated as trainees because they are still training to get the highest attainment, highest enlightenment. Now you know that there are eight noble persons or eight Ariya persons. Number one is the person at the moment of Sotapati Maga or the first Maga. And number two is the person from the moment of Sotapati Phala until just before he reaches the second Maga and so on. So there are eight persons. Among these eight persons, 
The first seven are called trainees, seekers. The last one, an arahant, is called asikas. So whenever you find the word asika or non-trainee, please understand that means an arahant. So trainees here means they may be sotapannas, sakadagamis and anagamis. So for them, there is a little difference. Now, the first one, neither perception nor non-perception. Now his death consciousness is same, food, aruba, vajra, uh, vipaka, but he will be reborn in 31 only. Since he is a noble person, he will not go down again. He will not be reborn in lower worlds, either Ruba Vajra realms or Kama Vajra realms. He will be reborn in 31. He will be reborn in that realm again if he does not become an Arahant. So if he becomes an Arahant, then there is no rebirth. And when he is reborn in that realm again, then his rebirth consciousness is Fod Aruba Vajra Vipaka. So the same with the D 29 and 28. So an Ariya Brahma, a trainee Brahma who dies from the nothingness realm, dies with that Aruba Vajra Jana Vipaka and he can be reborn in 30 again or in 31, but not lower down. And so his rebirth consciousness will be third Aruba Vajra uh, Vipaka or fourth Aruba Vajra Vipaka. So, so similarly with 29 and 28. Now 27. Highest pure abode. You know there are five, five pure abodes. And who are reborn in pure abodes? Anagamis. No? Only Anagamis are reborn in pure abodes. No sort of banas, no Sagadagamis, no Bhutujanas. So the highest of the pure abode, pure abodes are all fifth jhana planes. So the, for them, the fifth Rupa Vajra uh, Vipaka Cheta functions as Patisandi, Bhavanga and also Juti. So when that Brahma dies, he dies with fifth fifth jhana rupa vajra vipaka consciousness. And it is said that a noble person who dies from the highest pure abode is not reborn anywhere. That means he will surely become an arahant in that life. He will be reborn there as an anagami. And during life in the highest pure abode, he will reach arahantship. So for him, there is no more rebirth, and so no rebirth consciousness for him again. And for number 26, clear sight that it is also pure abode, the same fifth jhana, vipaka consciousness, and he can be reborn in 21 because they will go up, up, up until they reach number 27. And then 27 is the highest they will reach and then they, they attain their hardship there and get out of samsara. So when he is reborn in number 27, then he, he, his rebirth consciousness will be a fifth Rupa Vajra Jhana Vibhaka Consciousness. And then number 25, beautiful abode. So for them, the dead consciousness is the same and the realms they can be reborn are 26 and 27. So the, the higher ones. And then serene abode, they can be reborn in 25 to 27. And durable abode, they can be reborn in 20, uh, 24 to 27. So this is for pure abodes, for anagamis say, who are reborn there. 
There is a saying in the manual that Anagamis are reborn in pure abodes only. But there is a saying that it does not mean that Anagamis are reborn in pure abodes only. They may be reborn in other realms also. So, Anagamis only are reborn in pure abodes. But Anagamis can be reborn in other realms as well. So that is the common opinion of many teachers. So here, they are Anagamis, and since they are Anagamis, they have very strong Samadhi, and so when they reach to the uh, one of the, let us say, the, the lowest of the uh, pure abodes, then they will just go up, up and up. They will not be reborn in their realm again, and they will not be reborn in the lower realms. Now number 21, great reward. Since he is a trainee, he is an Ariya, noble person. And it is said that noble persons in great reward will be reborn only in that realm again. They will not be reborn in any other realm. And they may become Arahants and there will be no more rebirth for them. But if they do not become Arahants, they will be reborn in that realm again, and not in 23 to 31. So please strike out 23 to 31. And then the others, steady aura, since they are trainees or noble persons, no lower realms. So the, the Brahmas from 20 will be reborn in 20, 21, and then 23 to 31, because 22 to 27 are reserved for anagamis only. So if he is not an anagami, he will not be reborn there. And then infinite aura, 19 to 21, 23 to 31, minor aura, because it is 18, 18 to 21, 23 to 31. And then radiant luster 17, uh, 17 to 21, 23 to 31. And infinite luster again uh, 16 to 21, 23 to 31. Minor luster 15 to 21, 23 to 31. And Mahabrahma 14 to 21, 23 to 31. Mahabrahma belongs to the first jhana plane and so his dead consciousness is first jhana rupa vajra vipaka consciousness. And since he will be reborn in 14 to 21 and 23 to 31, his uh, rebirth consciousness in the next life can be from 1 to 5 rupa vajra vipaka consciousness and also uh, 4 arupa vajra vipaka consciousness. Now number 13, Brahma's ministers the same but 13 to 21, 23 to 31. And number 12, Brahma's retinue, because he is an, a noble person, so he will not be reborn down under, so 12 to 21, 23 to 31. And then Paranimita Vasavati, the highest of the six Deva realms. Since he is a noble person, he is a three root person. No two root person can become an a Riya or a noble person. So he death, death consciousness is one of the four three root Kama Vajra Vibhaka. And he can be reborn in 5 to 21. So he can be reborn in a human wall, he can be reborn in the Deva wall, and he can be reborn in Brahma world. Now think of the Sagadagami. Once returner. Once returner means he reaches second stage of enlightenment as a human being. And then in the next life he will be reborn as a deva. And then 
from that he will be reborn as a human being again so he can come down not like the brahmas so in Paranimita was our de- a deva so a deva uh, dies with the three root Kama Vajra Vipaka consciousness and he can be reborn as a human being or as a deva in one of the six cel- celestial realms and also he can be reborn as a Brahma so uh, accordingly the rebirth consciousnesses are three root uh, Kama Vajra Vipaka or Rupa Vajra Vipaka or Arupa Vajra Vipaka the same with the minority to Sita, etc. until Chatu Maharajika. So the six divas are the same as the Paranimita. And then human beings. Human beings who are trainees, uh, who are Swatapanas, Takadagamis, and Anagamis. So for them, when they die, they will die with three root Kama Vajra Vipaka only three root persons become Ariyas so they can be reborn in uh, human beings again and in Deva realms and then 23 to 31 Brahma realms and their rebirth consciousness will be uh, three root Kama Vajra Vipaka consciousness and so on since there are no areas in the four woeful states, they are not given here. We end with human beings. And in the human world, there can be uh, both Putrujanas and areas or noble persons. But in the Apaya or four woeful states, there can be no area persons. There can be only Putrujanas. So from these charts we know both for Putrujanas and for Ariyas what rebirth will follow uh, their deaths. And also we know that what Chaitas will function as Patisandi, Bhavanga and Judy for the different persons uh, from this chart. So we'll have a break now.